Hello, hi everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. You know what I'm realizing? I'm starting to become a morning person. Like I almost am always filming in the morning and I go to bed at like 11 o'clock at night. That is disgusting. What am I, 80 years old? The fact that I've seen the sunrise almost every day this week homophobic. Who am I becoming? Where are my 4 a.m. work nights? Well, I'm super excited for this video and probably like two months late to this trend. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty late to this trend, but that's okay because I'm late to every trend and somehow you guys still want to watch. Maybe I'll should get that checked. <laughs> I'm going to be rating skincare brands using Tear Maker. Now, this is a website that a bunch of YouTubers have been using to rate different things. I was inspired by two different people, James Charles, when he rated his scandalous moments in his career, and also Laura DIY, which I know now to say that her name is Laura. In my video about her, I was just referring to her as Laura DIY and you guys would not stop coming after me in the comments. So Lauren, it's Lauren. <laughs> if you want to watch their videos, I'll link them in the description box below. But they both did this and I was like, oh, this would be pretty fun, but I don't really know what to do with it. And then I remembered that I'm a shady bitch who loves to drag skincare brands. Hi, nice to meet you. I have strong opinions about skincare brands. If you haven't watched my truth about videos, you know that I deep dive and pick apart and criticize. No, I'm kidding. I always do it with good intent to help the brands out, but I typically take a critical approach when it comes to reviewing products and brands and so I thought why not condense all of those truths about videos into this video and rate the brands using Tear Maker. As I was going through this list and picking out all the brands I was like oh girl this is gonna be really difficult I can feel it there's just so many I don't like. I'm gonna try to keep my words in a minimum and not go into a full review for every single brand that I mention but you know no promises this is blabbermouth Hiram we're talking about but yeah let's just jump into it. All right so let's go through the categories because I categorize these into five categories. Why did I say that word so much? English time, get it together. Five different categories that I will be listing each of these brands into. The first is get on my face now. Get on my face now. I feel like that needs no explanation. The second is I'll tolerate it, which means it's like, it's good. I enjoy some of the products, but I'm not necessarily like in love with the brand, but it's a good brand. The third is meh, which is basically like, I mean, I won't throw it away, but I will groan when using it. The fourth is finish and recycle where I'm just like, yep, I am over this product, but I don't want to waste it. Or I'll give it to someone else because I'm just done with it. And the last one is for the feet, which basically means that the only chance I would ever use the skincare product is if I used it on my feet. And then at the very end, I'm going to choose my favorite favorite brand and my least favorite brand, which is something I don't think I've ever done before. Like it's so hard for me to choose a single favorite, but you know what? I want to push myself in this video. I want to see how divisive I can be. <laughs> I'm just mostly doing it from my personal curiosity because I truly don't know what my favorite and my least favorite brands are. Although I have a hunch. All right, let's go. So first on the list is Mario Badescu. Now Mario Badescu is one of those brands like their <sighs> facial sprays I cannot stand and a lot of their products I don't like, but I recently took a deeper dive into Mario Badescu's website and found that they actually do have have a lot of fragrance-free products and a lot of formulas that are not bad. They're actually pretty good. I think the main thing for me is that the facial sprays are just so bad that public opinion has written off the entire brand but they actually do have some good products like their drying lotion I think is great for anyone who struggles with severely oily acne so I'm going to put that I don't know if I should do finish and recycle or meh oh see this is already difficult because it depends on what product it is I can't think product specifically I just have to think of the brand overall I will say finish and recycle but it may be meh because I am going to try out some of their newer products that are formulated without fragrance and irritants so stay tuned you know what? I'm just gonna go out of order I don't know why it's Selected this order specifically. I'm just gonna go with what my soul tells me to do. All right, Origins. I, you know, Origins has good intent. You know, they're doing good things for the environment. But from a product standpoint, I would say for the feet because that's literally how bad I think the formulas are. But because of all the good things that they're doing for the environment and because they're wanting to help the earth and because they're doing a lot of good things in that way, I will put them on finish and recycle, meaning I would donate those products so fast. Next, I'm gonna do Crave Beauty. Honestly, instantaneously get on my face now. I love Crave Beauty. I think the product formulas are just so top tier superior and just incredible and literally speak to everything that I want in the skincare product. So no hesitation there. Absolutely love Crave Beauty. Let's go next with Clinique. You know what? Clinique is difficult. I think Clinique is the perfect representation of meh. Like their products will work and you know they'll do what they're supposed to but some of their products are not that great and I will never really find myself like loving a Clinique product. It's more so just it'll work. You know? Mm -hmm. 
meh. But I wouldn't say I'll tolerate it because some of their products, their formulas are just, they're, they're not good. And I feel like in a lot of ways, Clinique is kind of stuck in the 80s. Like they need to innovate a little bit more or just have like a whole rebrand and just zhuzh up their formulas a little bit. I don't know. I'll put them as meh. I feel like they deserve to be there. Let's see. Next, I will do The Ordinary. You know what? I struggle a little bit with this because I love the products from The Ordinary because of how simple, because of how effective they are, and because of how affordable they are. Now, that being said, are they products where they blow my mind? I think they're so innovative. I think they're the best products in the world and I absolutely have to have them in my skincare routine. No, they're not, which is why I'm kind of like, I'll tolerate it, but I also don't want to be canceled. <laughs> Because people know I love The Ordinary. Here's the thing, I love The Ordinary because of their affordability and their accessibility. That's the reason I love it. But in terms of product formulation, I mean, The Ordinary is all about simplicity, like one active ingredient approach. Whereas my favorite brands are like Crave Beauty that have a blend of so many different amazing formulas. So should I be controversial? Ugh, this is difficult. Um, I'm just gonna be controversial. I'll put it in, I'll tolerate it. I will, I will put it there. I think Ordinary is great, but if you watch my recent Truth About Ordinary video, I talk about how while the Ordinary products are great, they are supplemental. And I wouldn't say that they necessarily fulfill the most fundamental important steps of a skincare routine. And you'll hear a lot of chemists talk about this, how the Ordinary is great to be added into a skincare routine that already has your basic cleanser, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, but the Ordinary on its own is not enough for that. So I will say I'll tolerate it. Oh my God, the comment section is gonna be on fire. I promise guys, I still like the Ordinary. Let's go with Lush Cosmetics. <sighs> This is really difficult. <laughs> I like a lot of what Lush stands for and I love the causes they support and the organizations that they partner with, but their formulas, I'm sorry, they're just terrible. Like they're literally some of the worst formulas I've ever seen. And I wanna put them in finish and recycle, but honestly, the last time I went into Lush, I asked them, I was like, please just like show me one product that does not have essential oils. Just one that doesn't have like a single essential oil or fragrant component, please show me. And, and they were lost, they, they couldn't give me anything. And not to mention their lack of preservatives, meaning that the products go bad really, really, really quickly, which brings about a ton of other issues. I'm sorry, Lush, I'm gonna have to put them in for the feet. I feel really bad for that, but it has to be done. I'm sorry, Lush Cosmetics. By the way, is Lush doing okay? Because they closed all their locations in Hawaii. Even though I don't like their formulas, I hope they're doing okay. They do do a lot of good change. <sighs> I feel bad about that one. If, if you want to learn more about like my reasoning for Lush Cosmetics, go watch my Truth About Lush Cosmetics video. Actually, to be honest, I think all of these products, all of these brands I've done Truth About videos on. So if you want to learn more about that, just go search Truth About or I'll put them all in the description box below if you do want to learn more about why I do like or dislike all these brands. But yeah, it's going to have to be for the feet. I'm sorry. So next up, let's do, ooh, let's do Curology. So, you know, I would say initially like I'll tolerate it because that was definitely my approach when I first was introduced to the brand. I think it was because their marketing campaigns early on were just like everywhere. So it kind of annoyed me, but honestly, the more I learned about Curology, the more I like it. And I know some people have gotten a little bit more critical about Curology because the concentration of prescription grade ingredients is so, so, so low. But I personally don't see an issue with that because at the end of the day, Curology, while they do match you with prescription, prescription grade ingredients, I think that the only people who should be prescribing strong high percentages of prescription grade skincare are dermatologists. Like you actually going to a dermatologist where they can see your skin up close and know all of your issues. Curology will always provide you with non-sensitizing, non-irritating skincare at an affordable rate. And just the amount of transformations I've seen from Curology is just insane. So I'm gonna have to say, get on my face now. Like I really, really like Curology. And I think the final thing for Curology that does push it into get on my face now is that it's making non-irritating skincare accessible to people who don't know about skincare because inevitably not everyone is going to be as into skincare as we are. There's some people who, you know, they don't want to do all the research. They just want to find a good, simple skincare routine without having to do the work. And I think Curology is great for that. Ooh, and to follow up with that one, I will do proactive, not to be confused with Curology. You know, it's so funny. I get so many comments of people who saw that Curology used me in an advertisement and they're like, you change. You've always hated Curology. How could you do this? You're bought out. I'm not supporting you anymore. And I'm like, girl, I've always liked Liked Curology. Like literally go back two years on my channel. I have always loved them. And then I realized it's because they thought it was proactive. And I'm like, oh, very, very, very different. Proactive, I am not a fan of. Although I have to say some of proactive products are not like horrific. So I'm going to put them in finish and recycle. Definitely not a fan of their over treating stance. Like they put way too many treatment ingredients in all their products and they're overpriced, but some of their products are not that bad. So I'm going to have to say finish and recycle. Let's do Kiehl's. Oh, this one's hard because Ugh, I want to put it in meh because that's truly how I feel about a lot of the products. But to be honest, the majority of their products 
include like a lot of essential oils and like Clinique, they're kind of stuck in like this older age of skincare. So I'm tempted to put them in finish and recycle, but you know what, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna put them in meh. I went really hard on them in their Truth About video and actually some of their recent products have been formulated with less irritants. So I see that they're trying to improve. I'm just gonna put them in meh. I think that's where they deserve to go. The majority of Kills products, meh, not a fan of, but you know, they have some good ones. Okay, let's do First Aid Beauty next. You know what? Honestly, gut reaction, First Aid Beauty is get on my face now. Every time they come out with a new product, I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. And it's a brand that I can say, if not all of their products, at least 99% of their products, I stand behind because I think they're a great brand between innovation and non-irritating sensitizing skincare. I think they're great and I'm honestly shocked at how frequently I include First Aid Beauty products in my videos. Like it's it's pretty intense. I go hard for First Aid Beauty so they're definitely good on my face now. Okay um let's see let's do ooh, Pixie. Let's do Pixie. You know what? I'm gonna put Pixie in meh. Normally I would have put them in finish and recycle, but as pictured here, their recent collection actually kind of took me by surprise. They have some new bomb formulas in their Clarity collection that when I was reading the ingredient list at the store, I literally was like, <gasps> I gasped out loud because those ingredient lists were so damn good. And I hope that's the direction Pixie is taking because if they are, I may find some new favorite products, but the majority of their formulas, I still don't agree with. They're still overly fragranced and just not my favorite. So I think they go perfectly in the meh category. All right, let's do Versed. You know, Versed has some of of my favorite products. I've definitely included them in my best of 2020 skincare, but then some of their other products are just not it. Like they either have bomb formulas or they have formulas which just leave a big question mark in my head. And I'm just like, wait, why? <laughs> why? Why did you do this? So I'll put them into, I'll tolerate it. Like definitely some really good products and I love their philosophy overall, but they have some products that I'm just like, eh, don't know about that one, mate. <sighs> and here we are. Be honest, the brand that you clicked on this video for. Saint Ives. I wonder where I should put it. Oh my god, this is such a hard one. That was difficult. That definitely required a lot of thinking on my part. Oh my god, I feel so bad. <laughs> To be honest, St. Ives from a corporate standpoint, like people at a corporate level have been really nice. So shout out to you St. Ives because I've dragged your name like crazy and you guys could be really, really petty about it, but you've always been respectful. So props to you for that, but improve your damn formulas. Jesus, I'm trying to help you. Let's do Tatcha. Tatcha, I'll put Tatcha into Met because they really do use some incredible ingredients. Some ingredients that I, I truly love. But goddamn, they have fragrance in nearly every single product. And I get it, you know, it's part of the luxury experience and Tatcha is definitely luxury. Oh, not to mention the price point is very, very, very high. So that's another reason they're in meh. But they're not the worst. I would definitely use Tatcha over Origins any day because of how high quality the formulas are. So I'd say they have a good meh. Funny story, Tatcha was actually very responsive and very nice before I made the Truth About video and they even sent me their entire skincare collection and I told them I was making a video about the brand and they were like oh let's send you the entire collection and I was like oh that's nice but you know just letting you know I'm, I'm gonna be honest in my thoughts and feelings about it and then I made my truth about video where I you know kind of dragged them and I never heard back from them <laughs> not a single word but that's okay I'm not offended at all it's just the way brands work let's do the inky list next and it's an automatic get on my face now you know I've talked about the difference between the inky list and the ordinary and why I personally like the inky list more and it's because I feel like the inky list has more well-rounded formulas that do fill those categories of your moisturizer your cleanser your sunscreen but still at nearly the same price point as the ordinary and honestly I haven't found a single product from the brand that I don't like which is so rare. Are they luxury skincare products? No, but that's not what I'm looking for. And I think from a formula standpoint, they're so good. And honestly, you would know that if you've watched my videos, I've included their products in my videos for so, so long. So love the Inky List. Also to mention, Inky List is one of those brands that is so progressive that they teach me about skincare. Like most brands, I'm just like, come on, use more innovative ingredients. Let's go, let's try something new. It's like pulling teeth, but Inky List is like so far ahead of me to where I'm just trying to catch up. I'm like, whoa, what's this ingredient? What's this new ingredient? I've never heard of that one before. They teach me about skincare and I like a brand that does that. Next, let's do Fenty Skin, the controversial one. Probably the most nervous I have ever been for a video on my channel. Fenty Skin, where do I put you? <laughs> this is really difficult. I'm gonna have to say finish and recycle. I I'm just gonna be honest. Like their products are not the worst I've ever seen and I do like the cleanser, but you know, fragrance is just a big part of what Rihanna likes in her skincare products. That's something that's really important to her and something that's a turnoff for me. I'd say it's one of the better products in the finish and recycle category category, but still, yeah. <laughs> if you want to know all my thoughts about that, go watch my Fenty Skin video. God, I was so scared for that video. The pressure was on. I felt like Rihanna herself was watching me film that video. Let's do Paula's Choice next, which honestly, I'm going to have to say Paula's Choice will be a, hmm, uh, 
I was gonna say get on my face now, but they do have some formulas that I'm not crazy about, but I'm gonna say get on my face now. You know, Paula's Choice really does fall in line with my personal philosophy. And I know you guys are saying, wait, Hiram, why don't you ever include Paula's Choice in your videos? I know, bitch. I need to talk about and try more of their formulas. Like it is a dedication I have to myself for 2021. I think it's because I've tried a lot of products in their brands. Are the products like my tried and true loves? Some of them, yes, but not all of them, but they are a brand that I can completely stand behind when it comes to formulations. So I'm gonna say it's on my face now. Let's do Neutrogena next. You know, Neutrogena has been growing on me. I will say, I have seen more and more of their products that they come out with have less irritating ingredients. And Neutrogena is one of those interesting brands where I feel like they're half and half. Half of the brand is like dermatology focused products, very basic, but straightforward ingredient list without irritants. And then you have the side of their brands where I think they're trying to appeal to a Gen Z audience. I'm not sure why that have a ton of irritants. So I'm not in love with them. I'd say they're barely above me. I will put them at I'll tolerate it, but I can't believe I'm putting Neutrogena at the same level as The Ordinary. That just does not feel right. I changed my mind, I'll put them at meh. I think it's because there's nothing that really excites me about using their products. It's just kind of like, yeah, they'll work, you know, they'll be functional. You can find some non-irritating formulas, but am I gonna love it? No. And are they a little bit overpriced for what they're offering? Yes. Let's do Ole Henriksen, which I'm gonna have to say finish and recycle. Like that was a disappointment making that video because I really truly thought that Ole Henriksen had some products that I really liked from an ingredient standpoint. And then when I was going through all the products, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like anything. There's nothing on here that I like. So yeah, they're gonna have to go and finish and recycle. They're not the worst thing ever, but yeah, they definitely, I feel like deserve a spot there. Actually, should I put them in for the feet? The only reason I say that is because they're kind of expensive. Oh, they're not expensive, but they're definitely like, they're not cheap. And from what I remember, they have a walnut scrub and they have alcohol-based toners and fragrance makeup wipes with alcohol. But I feel like for the feet is so harsh. Like that, that's so harsh. Oh, do I be shady today? Should I be shady? You know what? I'm just gonna be shady because For the Feet is getting a little bit lonely. It's a little neglected. So I'm gonna put it in For the Feet and I'm not gonna apologize for it. Damn, I'm sorry, Ole Henriksen, that's kind of harsh, but I'm waiting for new formulas from you. And then we have Glossier, which, <laughs> you know, they have some skincare formulas that like aren't bad. I'll put them in meh. You know what? Cause I do love their balm.com. And you know, while they don't have products that necessarily like inspire me, they do have some non-irritating options, which is honestly what I ask for from a brand. So yeah, I'll put them in meh. I feel like they deserve to be there. And then CeraVe, the question. I'll be 100% honest, I'm feeling a little bit torn. Now, here's the reason why, before y'all freak out. <laughs> I love CeraVe products because of how simple they are, and I personally believe that they are the best option at a drugstore price point, which is always why I'm encouraging people to get CeraVe, because I know the majority of you guys only shop from the drugstore and don't have a lot of money to spend on skincare, or you aren't going to purchase skincare products online because some of you guys just don't like that, and I respect it. And I would so much rather you guys choose CeraVe over other drugstore brands that I typically find that are gonna be so irritating. But are they on the same level as Crave Beauty, First Aid Beauty, or Paula's Choice? That's a tricky one. What should I put? You know what? I'm just gonna put Unkit on my face now because I will say like, their products have been featured in my best of 2020 videos. They have really stellar formulas and honestly, I, I think they're a good brand. Okay, wow, I did not expect I'll Tolerate It to be the most neglected category. That honestly surprises me, but to be honest, I fully anticipated that the majority of these brands would fall in the meh category. Like, I'm not surprised at all. Typically when it comes to reviewing skincare brands, that's honestly the approach that I feel like I normally take. Like I'm not out to cancel brands, but the majority of brands I'm not gonna be in love with. I am surprised at how many are on Get On My Face Now, but I think that's because of my bias. I honestly think this was an excuse for me to put my favorite brands on the list. I expected more brands to be in For The Feet, but I'll be honest, like the majority of brands I don't feel that badly about. Like I'm picky, I know what I want for my skin, but as a brand overall, the majority of brands have at least some products that I really do like or agree with from a formulation standpoint. There's very few brands where I look at their entire list and think, there's nothing here. Oh, I should have put Clean and Clear on this list. What was I thinking? Oh my gosh, Clean and Clear is one that was so popular and was so requested by you guys. Um, Without a doubt, Clean and Clear would be on For the Feet. I don't even have to think about it. Clean and Clear was one of those brands when I was going into my review video, I was like, please just give me something to work with. And the one product I tolerated from their line, they discontinued. <laughs> so it's just a struggle. Yeah, they would definitely be in for the feet. And now I have to decide what my favorite brand is and what my least favorite brand is. Oh, 
This is gonna be so difficult. Gut reaction, St. Ives is my least favorite. I mean, I feel like St. Ives have had so long to improve their formulas. They've had so many dermatologists and estheticians and chemists call them out for their poor quality formulas. They haven't really listened, like they haven't changed. And I think it's because they know that they sell really well. And yeah, I just, I can't support a brand that feels that way. So they're definitely my least favorite. For my favorites, it would be a tie between Crave Beauty and the Inky List. This is so difficult. I'm going to say Crave Beauty only because the Great Barrier Relief literally saved my life. <laughs> I know that sounds so dramatic, but I have not found a product like the Great Barrier Relief that is so just blow your mind transformative. And I'll be honest, I have a little bit of a bias because it is a YouTuber created brand. Like Leah Yu, she was a YouTuber and created this skincare brand. And you know, as a creator, you're already balancing so many different things. So building this successful of a brand by yourself, like Leah Yu literally designed the packaging herself. I think she launched with like a $50,000 budget, which is pretty small in the cosmetics world. And the fact that she herself has grown it to this level and this much popularity as a tiny independent indie based brand is, is, is incredible. That's a really hard one because the Inky List has so many good and innovative products that I feel confident recommending to everyone. But you know what, I'm gonna say Crave Beauty. I'm really proud of Leah Yu. I think her products are incredible. And yeah, Great Barrier Relief is, is just the best. <gasps> oh my God, I just realized I did not put use to the people on this list. Who the hell am I? What is wrong with me? Oh my God, how did I forget that one? Okay, you know what, honest thoughts. I will put you to the people in I'll Tolerate It. They have some of my favorites. Like that cleanser is my, ugh, my all time favorite. Love the brand and love the morals and what they stand for and environmentalism and everything. But some of their products do contain irritants that I'm not a fan of. Like I used to think that their fragrance was just the spinach and the kale extracts that they use, but come to find out they actually do use essential oils and fragrant components They're all listed under the term fragrance. And I'm putting in there because I'm salty because their cleanser is sold out all the time. <laughs> I'm just being shady, but seriously, it's so hard to find a cleanser. I'm just like, God. Ugh, like I struggle to find a cleanser. I've had to ration my cleansers because every time I go to Sephora, I can't find them because they're just always sold out, whether it be online or in store. So because I'm feeling a little bit salty today, a little bit controversial, I would put them in, I'll tolerate it. But mostly because of those other formulas. That's just my honest thoughts. Wow, well, this was so much fun. I did not know it was going to be like as difficult for me to choose, but at the same time, I feel really comfortable with how this looks. Like this definitely resembles my true opinions about these skincare brands. I hope it it shows that my intent when reviewing brands is always from a place of caring. It's always from a place of wanting to help these brands out, but God damn it, some of these brands are stubborn. That's okay, we'll keep pushing and hopefully we can find more irritant-free options in the future. What do you guys think of the way I rated all of these? I know the comment section is just gonna be mayhem. <laughs> It's gonna look like World War III down there because people are gonna be freaking out about me putting ordinary and all tolerated. But you know what? I stand by what I said. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.